Uh, welcome to the building bench. We have a very special build. Need a casing for a very, very special build. Yeah, that'll do. Horrible. Better get it cleaned. Some considerable time later, back from the cleaners, we have a clean casing. Better get tigging. So we tig it up, peg it, drill it, tap it, face it off, backfill it, all ready for building. You probably can't see it, but this uh, top bit here has been bored out to take the bigger bearing. It's deeper and it's bigger and it's wider and it's massive. We'll show you later in the video. Uh, interestingly, when uh, this was first done and the tail bearing lined up down there with the head bearing, uh, I got a phone call that basically said, do you want, the, do you want these machines slightly out of true like they are at the moment? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the head and the tail aren't actually lined up with each other. So these have also been corrected so that the head and the tail are absolutely in line. That normally means we get a beautiful blue check and a better diff as a result. Well, it's got its first coat of paint and it's got its number, 1147. Um, and yeah, they gotta go, they gotta go. They'll do, right, choppy chop, ticky tick time. Get them on there and we've got a casing worthy of the build. That's a bit better. We now have a couple of carrier caps converted and tigged up, ready for a proper build. It's just time, but it makes all the difference to a stronger diff. I'm going to run you through it really quickly. So here we have the main components and the special bit in the box there, but some special bits over here. This is one of our ultra spec peg diffs. So not only is it a peg casing, not only has it got the colleted caps, not only has it got Domex carrier cap conversion, it's also got our big bearing conversion in the tail end. That replaces this little bearing uh, with that one. Uh, we machine this out to take that bearing. This is extremely early series before Land Rover started cutting costs and put a much smaller weenier bearing in there. So that alone is a fairly special build. Uh, we've got the uh, Puma flange there. We've got a Ashcroft heavy duty crown wheel and pinion. And this. So I'm going to clear the bench and show you what's in the box of joiners. And this is what we're excited about. I'm so excited, I'm almost happy. This is a very special uh, ATB. I'm going to give you a lot of information in a very short space of time. ATB, Automatic Torque Biasing Differential. In old money, an LSD, Limited Slip Differential. The difference between an ATB and an LSD, ATB works by using gears. This one uh, has eight gears inside, six small ones, two drive gears. Uh, LSD works with plates. There are advantages and disadvantages of both. Advantages of an LSD is tunable. Disadvantages, the plates wear. Advantage of gears, fit and forget other than oil changes. Disadvantage, you can't tune it. You don't need special oil in an ATB. You do need special oil in an ATB. No, you do need special oil in an LSD. I nearly got it right. In simple terms, plated LSDs are more suited to racing environments and off-road racing and things like that. ATBs can be used for racing, but also are very road friendly because they don't wear like a plated LSD. However, another downside of an ATB is it's packed solid. There's no space inside. So if you chip a gear or break a shaft, highly likely you will blow it to bits because there's nowhere for the bits inside to go and it will mash everything up. We can't tab lock it, which I'll come back to later because the whole of this unit is very hard metal. Last time we tried, we broke several cutters on the CNC machine. They both give extra traction over an open diff. Um, an LSD, you can actually tune how much traction it gives you, so you can alter it. ATB, it's set from the factory. 
the ATB actually needs a minimal amount of uh, load on the wheels for it to work. Um, these are unusual in that normally uh, with a geared ATB, if one wheel's off the ground, it won't work at all. These have a spring pack inside, which allows some preload to hit the drive gears, which means that it will actually work even with a wheel off the ground or you dab the brakes. The other trick is that if you've got a vehicle that's got traction control, one of these units actually adds to it. Now, big problem with an ATB is it's untunable, and that's where this one comes in. This was a prototype which I've managed to get my hands on two of them. This one is brand new and it's sold and it's being built, and the idea of this is that it's both got gears inside, ATB, and it's got plates inside, which I believe are carbon fibre, and those are tunable to give extra clamping on top. So when this thing actually starts to work, although it's a linear increase in clamping, at the very last minute you get this extra clamping which we can tweak and tune to suit a front or a rear or whatever you want. And that is pretty unique in the marketplace. I can't help but now take this apart and have a little peek inside. Well, I'm glad I pulled it apart. This has been floating around for probably 12 years. That That isn't rust, that's, um, that's sort of like a grease finish. So I'm actually gonna completely strip this, uh, clean it, and then put it back together again. This is the standard uh, ATB setup. This is the outer drive gear. Uh, at the bottom there, there's some grooves for the oil, which is uh, not on the normal ATBs. Then you've got the bottom set of six gears, the top set of six gears. And then into here, goes this assembly so you've got a drive plate you've got some gears here and then these are the spring plates that are all part of this assembly that preload it those are obviously the bolts that hold it together this is the uh, other drive gear and this again is all wax we'll clean all that up and it will look lovely when i've got it all cleaned up and then over here is the special bit so here we have a, a, a drive plate and this is the carbon fiber additional pad which goes on top and then that plate goes on top of there and you can see where the extra machining has been done. So I'm going to completely take this apart anyway, clean it up and put it back together and then I'll carry on the video because I can't let it go out like this, it's just too nice. Now back to the ATB, forget this is the special but any of the ATBs, this whole unit here is a billet and inside here are the gears and this metal is incredibly hard. We tried to tablock convert it and it just blew the cutters apart because it's such tough steel. So that's a no-no. So we have been looking over a period of years as to how to actually keep the crown wheel bolts tight onto the crown wheel. It is a problem with ATBs that whatever you do, these crown, the crown wheel bolts will come loose against the crown wheel. And it's a matter of improving what you do to the, to the best of our ability. So to start off with, um, you know, we've, we've seen ATBs come in with these. This is a standard Land Rover bolt. I don't even think it's a grade 8.8. .8. It's really old school. And that has a, a nice hardened washer. Um, that will either undo, and when it undoes, and it's sort of hanging out here, as it undoes itself, it will work like a lathe tool on the inside of the casing and destroy it. Either that or it will break off. And even though this isn't an 8.8, .8, you break that bit off into a thread of a crown wheel and it's an absolute sod to get it out, times 10 holes maybe. So what a lot of people use is um, the FTC 5150 heavy duty Land Rover bolt that I think they used on the Wolfs. And the reason they use this one is because it's got a nice big flanged head and it's got serrations on it. And the idea of this is that when you wind it on there, the serrations actually bite in and hold it in place. So there's no washer used. The, 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 the serrations are what holds it in place. Problem with this, it's a 12.9 grade. Um, so it doesn't stretch. It's quite brittle and it will actually break and we see ATBs come in where someone's broken all 10 of these in bits and now you've got a 10.9 grade bit of stub sticking in your crown wheel to try and get out. So we have used these in the past but they're still not a great solution. The other solution we see are people, uh, they'll use an Allen bolt. Um, sometimes they'll use the Allen bolt with the hardened washer. The problem with the Allen bolt is if you look at it, it's got a very small surface area on the head. So there's very little surface area actually biting into this. Um, so again, what we've done in the past is we've tried using Allen bolts and we tried using something called a Nordlock washer. Now the Nordlock washer is quite unusual. It has serrations on both sides and a cam in the middle. And as you tighten it up, 
both these serrations bite into the bolt and to the uh, diff that you're winding it into and then the cam actually locks as it goes in they are absolute sods to undo and they normally keep things tight but even when you put one of those on here the problem is you you're, you're only using a small surface area you're not covering the whole bolt so we actually have ended up using a combination of this which is a 10.9 grade unplated hex head bolt. The reason it's unplated is a lot of people don't realize that zinc plating, uh, the silver that you get on them, actually brittleizes the bolt and makes it more prone to shearing. So we use black bolts and we also use an even more expensive uh, Nordlock. This is a 3 8 NLX. And the NLX, you probably can't see it here, but it's actually curved like a saucer. So not only do you get the serrations on both sides and the cam locking system in the middle, it's actually curved so it's sprung. So when you bolt this down, it's actually sprung loaded as well. Uh, these are not cheap, and funnily enough, neither are those. But the combination of those, we think, is the strongest way of clamping an ATB to a crown wheel and pinion. So now, we're going to build it. Right, all sprung spotlessly clean now i'm going to put this together i've put the bottom set of gears in um i've got everything all ready to go back together so we'll put a bit of oil on it and get it all back together ready to build 3.5 heavy duty rear cut ashcroft crown wheel or rather pinions in there uh, we've taken the collets out so we can clean everything collets will be going back in and then the center and the heavy duty crown wheel to match and then Domex carrier cap conversions, and we will have one hell of a diff soon. So we've got the big bearing in and our adapter sleeve that takes a standard seal. So that's the front end pretty much now going together finally. So very much the top half done. Got the puma flange on there, modified to take the big bearing, the super flange, genuine seal, puma casing. Collets are now in, fossil bronze pads there with the pegging bolts and the centre is... Wow, what a diff. All done, dusted. So we've got uh, XS4 before peg casing. Domex carrier cap conversion with our own ears with a nut and bolt through it. We've got upgraded uh, carrier cap bolts with Nordlock washers. We've got the 10.9 grade a black um, 3H BSF bolts with NLX Nordlocks holding the ATB LSD pack together. 3.5 heavy duty crown wheel with a lovely blue check. Uh, all done, dusted, ready to go off to its new owner. We have a second one of these, which is being fitted to my friend's racer. It's gonna give it some hammering for about six races. Then we're gonna have it all apart and actually see that this unit may even go into production. But that is a lovely diff. Bye for now.